Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fortress of Comic News, episode 242. I am one of your hosts, Chris, alongside the once again returning co-host, Mike. Yes, I'm back. It's time for the unforeseeable future. Um, yeah, I, uh, I hope you ate a lot of turkey and stuffing and all that good shit. Yeah, my my Thanksgiving. So, at, to everybody in the states, uh, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. To everyone out of the states, you have no clue what we're talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah kind of, maybe. But my Thanksgiving day was filled with uh, eating, driving, and binging TV shows that we're going to talk about in a minute. Yeah, uh, my sister and I found ourselves sitting on the couch for a solid, like, two days, and a lot of stuff was watched. Um I mean, we got so much shit to talk about that we watched. I'll probably just jump into it. Uh, have you watched any Cowboy Bebop yet? No. Um, so that one I was holding off on. You've, you've watched the anime, right? I have not. Okay. I've seen the anime. I love the show. Uh, if you go on the subreddit, because that's where, you know, all the crazy diehard fans of the anime are. Uh, they, I think most of them hate the show or... They don't hate the show. The reasons are just like, oh, this character, um, specifically, oh, I can't even think of her name, but the the female lead, they're like, oh, she's uh, she's not the the character that she was, um, in the show. She's more of like a bounty hunter. But I thought I thought all the characters are awesome. Um, I think it holds up. I I my sister really liked it. She's never watched the anime, so it's. It's shot just like the anime with the crazy camera angles. It has that vibe to it of like it's futuristic, but you, it's old school. You know, like the cops dress like like their background guys in Batman in the animated series. You know, the timeless, the timeless yeah. futuristic vibe. So you'll love it. Um, and every every episode's like a villain of the week kind of thing with this overarching plot. The only gripe I have with the show is the main villain. Um, Man, I'm just blanking on everybody's names. Uh, <laughs> the main... So, you know, the premise is, like, he used to be an assassin. He's now a bounty hunter. Um, he doesn't want to tell the bounty hunters he's with that he used to be part of this uh, assassin guild. Well, you can't just leave the assassin guild. They're going to come to kill you. And the main guy, he looks like Lord Farquaad from, uh, <laughs> from Shrek. I kid you not, like, his chin... And I'll send you a picture after the show, but, like, his chin and everything, like, every time he gets mad and stuff, he looks like a live-action, like, animated Disney prince. I don't know how else to say it. Like, his chin is just, like, more than half his face, and it's kind of hilarious. And that's, that's all awesome. people are saying on the subreddit is, like, yeah, we're far quad, we're far, like, I can't unsee it. Um, so when you start watching it, you'll text me. But I I loved it. I, I really loved it. I can't wait for season two. Um the music is amazing. I mean, it's the same music from the anime. So, uh, yeah, it was a pleasant surprise because we we all know how they butchered live action anime stuff. So, yeah, I, I feel like watching the the community people wanted this to be bad. It wasn't oh, even yeah. that, like whether it was right. or it wasn't. They just wanted it to be for some reason. Yeah, so. I I feel like the anime people just don't want live action where it's like I don't know. I really I really enjoyed it. Um, my feeling thought, is, yeah. is if it's good, and then somebody's like, hey, I should go watch the anime this is based on, that's a mm -hmm. win. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. For sure. Uh, and also, John Cho, who plays Spike Spiegel, the main character, is, you know, uh, Harold from Harold and Kumar. Yeah. Is absolutely awesome in it. He's so good. He's, like, the reason I want to watch it. Yeah, he's so good in it. Um, the guy who plays Jet Black, uh, Mustafa, he's been in a bunch of random stuff, but he's really good um, as as jet black because he has like the same voice like the loud obnoxious like retired cop i yeah, he him him and spike together and john cho together are so good um they really make the show and that's mostly what the show is so um okay hawkeye talk first two episodes of hawkeye you watched them yes uh so out of those first two episodes the intro was sick where you didn't know where it was going with uh what the hell's her name? The um, character. Uh, Kate, is it Katie? Kate. Uh, oh, Kate yeah, Kate Bishop. Yeah, yeah. Kate Bishop. Yep. And the the first thing is like, well, how does this all tie together? Oh shit! Her her dad dies <laughs> in the New York uh, 
the New York fighting, and then she happens to see Haw- Hawkeye through like her destroyed <laughs> high rise apartment. Um, I thought that was a cool way to kind of you know shoehorn her into the. Yeah, she's just one one dead mom away from being Batman. Yeah, pretty. Much. <laughs> uh, other than that, I thought it was a cool way how to uh, tie them together. I mean, obviously her her soon to be stepdad is evil. <laughs> like the mustache alone gives. Yeah, away. you just meet the guy. You're like, the, like cause this dude. He dresses like an all black. He's got like a mysterious uh, Spanish accent. Like he's the villain. Yeah, <laughs> like, he, he, all he needs to do is twirl that thing, and, and yeah. it's it's over. Yeah, that's it. Um. And then, yeah, the sword fighting thing. I'm like, he loves swords. I mean, come on, like, all, where are all these red flags, people? Um, I thought it was a cool way to bring them together where she, like, steals the suit and uh, goes around, like, has one night in it where everybody thinks that Hawkeye or uh, the assassin is back. Um, Ronan, right? Yeah. Uh, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I think overall, and the, the Christmas theme is, you know, it's got a nice feel good vibe for this time of year. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of the LARPing scene. Yeah, I didn't really care for that. I mean, but I'll how, like I was trying to figure out like how do you build drama? Like why would a firefighter steal the suit, you know? Yeah. And I don't know how they got to that point like in the writers room where they're like what if one of the firefighters is a larper? I don't know many firefighters that are LARPers, let alone in New York City, where there's no areas to LARP. <laughs> where apparently they all are LARPers. Yeah, where they even said, yeah. like it's all yeah. cops and firefighters here. Yeah, like, what? That's a, that that was a little far fetched in our comic book show. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I need some more realism in my comics. Yeah. No, the uh, the demigod that flies down the lightning <laughs> bolt. That's that's fine, but when a cop starts LARPing. It's too much, man. Listen, you guys got to bring it down to reality. So the physics behind Thor is just dead on. Um, yep. <laughs> yep. No, I I think it's not my favorite Marvel thing. It's not even my favorite Marvel TV thing, but mm-hmm. it was good. Yeah. And no, it was good. I, I'll keep watching it. I want to see what episode three brings because – I, listen, bringing the tracksuit mafia in was hilarious. I yeah, that it. was really funny. Yeah, um, but episode three needs to give me a villain. It needs to mm-hmm. give me like who's the overarching like threat to this whole thing. And I need some costumes pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, don't don't make me wait till like episode seven out of eight to give me a costume. Although to be fair, when Kate shows up in like the purple yeah. costume kind of thing, which uh-huh. was pretty close to the comics, yeah, um, I was excited i'm like she looks phenomenal yeah, that, yeah so she's pretty good the girl that plays her um, yeah i like her there's moments where i think she's and I, that might be the character but she seems a little naive at moments but mm-hmm. overall i really like her yeah and i just um, want the dad to like rip the mask off and reveal that he's red skull because <laughs> is that what you want like, <laughs> like i just need something i need some, yeah i need some sort of like actual villain to see what's going on here he's actually bullseye Oh, don't tease me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I mean, first couple episodes are what? Do you know when each episode comes out? Is it Wednesdays? Or? I think it's Wednesdays. Okay. I got to keep track of this shit because, like, Disney Plus is Wednesdays. Curb Your Enthusiasm is Sundays at, like, 10.30 p.m. Yeah, dude, and soon track. it's going to be – soon just Disney Plus is going to be awful because yeah. uh, I think Mandalorian's soon. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then Book of Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. And then, like, oh, it's just going to be – Disaster. I think Stranger Things is coming out soon. I think uh, apparently there's a Home Alone TV show. I didn't even know that was a thing. I know there's a new movie on Disney Plus. There's a new Home Alone movie. Oh, is it a movie? Don't watch okay. it. I, d- I won't. Okay. I, yeah. <laughs> I was there's, much happier not knowing it existed. Yeah, and just watching the original Home Alone because it's, it's gold. Like, what the hell? Um, you can't replace Joe Pesci. Uh, he Man, uh, the part two, five episodes. Fucking awesome. Uh, I saw your tweet about fist, fist star <laughs> wanting to fist. Talking about fisting Skeletor. Yeah, that happens. And, like, that that was the moment where it was like, tell me Kevin Smith wrote this script without, you know, showing me the credits. Th- yeah, there's there's no goddamn way. I, like, even, I don't think he wrote that episode, but there's yeah. no way that he wasn't. Like, at some point, fist star was going to fist someone. And then, like, he, yeah, and then he had the guy with the spring, the spring legs show up. Right at the nick of time. I... He he definitely sprinkled those characters, and then the end of the season that was pretty cool with uh, um, the like the techno guys 
And I didn't know who that picture of was where Skeletor goes to that like giant techno thing mm-hmm. and it shows a picture of like a giant like bat symbol. I don't know what what monster that represents. I I so, think yeah, I'm not a huge He Man like wiki page, but uh, Yeah, like this is one of the f- few He Man things I've watched, so I have no yeah. clue. But it was awesome. I just love uh, it. <laughs> yeah, another uh, fun moment was when uh Skeletor just became the spot and started like making these yeah, portals making everywhere. The portals for uh for He Man to jump through. Um yeah, I thought it was cool. I like the I like how the they have a new uh, Man at Arms character. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I thought the whole it was a fun five episodes. Yeah, it there was moments in it that got very emotional too. Like mm-hmm. it was weird that I'm like I'm watching He Man cartoon. And I'm like <laughs> getting emotional. I'm getting choked up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will say this. I, I'm not going to go back and watch old He Man or anything like that. But right, like, right. I would consider myself a He Man fan now because of the show. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, the second, like, as much as I enjoyed the first part, the second part is so much better. Yeah, because you got He Man. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's part of it. Think, but, yeah. but like, it's just it's it's written better. It's just so mm-hmm. much. Everything about it's better, and um, I hope they do more. I hope they continue with this yeah. story arc, like, and keep moving forward because it was just awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I no, I really liked it. Um, yeah, I think you and I are the only ones watching it, though. I can't get anybody else to watch He Man. Uh, I've movies, been trying because yeah. it's it's just everybody out there. If you're not even if you're not a He Man fan, I'm not a He Man fan. The only He Man thing I've read or I tried watching the cartoon, and I couldn't. Yeah, I've read like DC versus He Man, mm-hmm. and then Injustice versus He Man, and that's it. Yep. And I this is one of my favorite things. It's mm-hmm. gonna be on my top the list and we'll get to it at the end of the year nice nice so yeah that's what i want to hear uh movies i read a couple movies that you, i watched i read a couple i watched a couple movies that you haven't watched yet um uh specter uh the final bond movie uh oh, um it, that's, that's not like, specter that's not specter that's the last one time to time to kill time to die no time to die yes no time to yeah. die oh my god um it was good it's long it's almost three hours long uh, so they do all the Bond things, you know, the all the little like nods to the original movies. This one feels more like a classic movie than any of the other ones did. Good. I mean, Casino Royale is pretty close there, but there's a lot of action in Casino Royale. Uh, this really, I think it ties up everything. Um, it was a nice send off for uh, for Daniel Craig, and that's all I'll tell you because I'm not going to spoil any of the movie for you. You haven't seen it yet. I know you're a big James Bond fan, but. Uh, I think as far as James Bond films go at the new series, I mean, Casino Royale will always be my number one. Uh, this one probably is second. Because I think it was like Skyfall would have been my second, but I think Skyfall is probably third now. And this takes the place. Spectre was okay. Uh, we don't talk about uh, Solstice one. Oh, yeah. Quantum of Sol. Quantum Sol- Solace, or whatever the hell that Quantum was. Quantum of Solace, yeah. Yeah. Spectre God. is the one that everybody I talked to was like, this is the greatest Bond movie ever. And I always challenge them, like, you haven't watched enough Bond. Because yeah, that, uh, that's a yeah. good movie, don't get me wrong, but right. that is nowhere near Spectre's the best. Spectre is just ever. a. Spe- Spectre is just an action. Spectre is like the Mission Impossible action movie <laughs> yeah, of like, the James Bond series. It's um, a good movie, but it's just not what it's not what Bond should be, in my opinion. Yeah. But, yeah, and yeah, I think I thought I thought it was a good movie. Uh, I also watched Black Friday with Bruce Campbell. Um, that's where he plays the department store manager, <laughs> and all the all the like uh, all all the customers. This is a low budget film. Like the monsters are like super cheesy. At the end, they like morph together to like this giant Godzilla, and you could tell it's just like someone's hand cam of a person like in a rubber costume. Um, but overall, it was enjoyable. I liked it. I mean, if you like Bruce Campbell, you like Evil Dead, you'll love this. It's a B-horror movie is what it is. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Where was that streaming? Uh, you can rent it on Amazon Prime. Because it's like supposed to be before it hits theaters. So I think it was like five bucks to rent it or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Amazon makes things easy. Because I, I wasn't about to find it somewhere. And I think it's it comes out to theaters after. But it was, it was pre-released on Amazon Prime. Uh... New Spider-Man trailer. 
Were there, uh, there, I, I, I guess we haven't talked about this yet. Um, were there clearly editing out other Spider-Man in the trailer? <laughs> They're like, our fans are dumb. Nobody will notice this. No, there's, there's definitely villains in the trailer punching at air. Um, so the question is, we don't know which Spider-Man it is. Okay. Whether it's, I mean, we know the villains are there, right? They give us the whole plot. We, I don't think we needed to know the whole plot in this trailer like we knew the villains were back you didn't need to explain it why like i think it's cool i wish they saved that for the movie you know like oh all these villains are dead and they need to stay dead for continuity purposes Mm -hmm. and also liability purposes for marvel and sony (laughs) um i i mean the trailer is awesome we get electro back with a new suit more true to the comics so let's start there um even in this world that we live in, where Baron <laughs> Zemo has the purple mask and dance in the fucking uh, bar, yeah, I would have bet you any amount of money you would never see the Electro, anything costume. close to the Electro yeah. costume. Yeah, it was there for sure. And when he, when he like electrified and the mask came up, yeah. I almost squealed. I was like, "You gotta be fucking kidding me! <laughs> <laughs> they did it, <laughs> beautiful bastards." <laughs> Uh, yeah. I think they're obviously editing out Venom. Venom? I, th- oh, I didn't think about that. I think that, because only, we only know five villains. Um, and apparently... Venom doesn't die, though. Oh, does he die? Well, we only know yeah. five villains, and to my knowledge, because I've been told the second hand, I haven't watched it yet, but at the end of Let There Be Carnage, um, Tom Holland shows up. So they're bringing oh. Venom into the tom holland thing oh uh, okay um and i think that the other i i think that everybody's off everybody's wrong except for me <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. um i think that the other spider-man's miles yeah no that's what i was getting at it could either be miles right or it could be it could be like andrew garfield or whatever but i doubt they want to come back i think everybody's talking about garfield and toby um it would be cool yeah, if they came back, and I, I kind of hope in my heart that that's what it is. Like the three Spider Men have to team up. I just, I don't know, I don't know, and I think it makes more sense for Marvel to do Miles next, mm-hmm. and then kind of let Sony have um, uh, Holland to do yeah. what they want with. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, but yeah, I. I I loved everything I saw in that trailer. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. and and once again, the true villain of the MCU is still <laughs> Iron Man. Yep. Um, because Electro has a um, the thing on Tony's chest oh, to help his yeah. electricity. Yeah. Uh, if you notice the uh, the tentacles for Doctor Octopus, Stark are, Industries. Yeah, Stark Industries. Yeah. So Tony is still the villain of the MCU. Will continue yeah. to be the villain of the MCU. Yep. And yep. this world would be better without Iron Man. Yeah, for sure. I agree. <laughs> well, that's that's the real problem. Um, the I was not expecting this to come out. Uh, the Super Pets trailer. We've been hearing about this a lot. Um, first off, John Krasinski uh, voicing Superman is awesome. Yes. Uh, I didn't. I didn't think like he would nail it like that, but it like. It's not. It's one of those things where you hear it and you're like, "Yeah, that could work." Um, kind of like when Jensen Ackles they got him to do Batman. Um, you're like, "Yeah, he kind of sounds like Batman." Well, John Krasinski sounds like I. He fits Superman for this movie for sure. Um, and then the Rock, the Rock voicing Crypto. It's just so phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I so when we first heard Super Pets, I thought we were getting all the you know like Bat Cow and all the. This is just. You know, crypto, and then a bunch of no-name animals getting powers. But maybe they'll take up their titles by the end of the movie. Well, I think right? the Hound is supposed to be Ace the Bat Hound. Okay, voiced by Kevin Hart, which is phenomenal. Yeah, that's yeah, that was really good. The Hound is really good. I don't know about the other ones. The <laughs> my the only gripe about this thing is: Did you see the redesign? I believe it's in the trailer of the Justice League, mm-hmm. and like Batman's like short and fat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was kind of. I mean, I get, I get, it's a cartoon. It's got to be funny. I, we're gonna watch uh, it either way. Um, I, 
I bet you they show up for five minutes and then we move on to crypto. Yeah, so it's not gonna bother me that much. But it's right, like I'm right. like, why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> why would you not make Batman jacked? Um I do enjoy that Cyborg has an afro though. Mm-hmm. That made yep. me laugh. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I'm rewatching it right now to see who all gets the So there's the pig, the bat there's hound, a, there's, there's a, a turtle, squirrel. right? Isn't there a turtle? I'm not seeing a turtle yet. Oh. Because I figure, like, the turtle would have something to do with Flash. Oh, there is a turtle. Okay. So, yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, because the turtle's really fast, which is... Yeah. Hilarious on its own. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, so I'm excited for this. I, mm. I'm going to watch it either way. Like, yeah. um, my I have a rule in life that's basically if Kevin Hart does it, I watch it, so... Oh, really? The See, fact I've never that he's been a it. huge fan of Kevin Hart. I love So, I love Kevin Hart his his work like yeah i enjoy him i just also love the person mm-hmm. like i think he's an extremely unique individual in that mm-hmm. like i don't know i just like his his ethics his work ethic is everything about him mm-hmm. so I'll, I'll support that man to the end of yeah the him, and, him and the rock seem to team up quite a bit yeah they're good buddies um kind of crazy that we see the rock hitting the dc universe as crypto before he gets black at him um <laughs> Yeah, probably the better role. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, this is awesome. I mean, either way, I'm excited uh, about it, and I think we've known about it for ever since we talked to. Um, oh, who did we? We had. Uh, I know you're talking about, and I can't think of it. Yeah, um, but either way, uh, super excited for this. I'll watch anything with The Rock, and uh, yeah, I think with that, let's. You want to jump to our awesome interview we have today with Mr. Elton Simpson. Yeah, let's do it. And we're back. We're back. So please check out all his cool stuff, including Vampires in New Jersey on Comixology. It's all right there. So it's, it's three different titles right there. Um, all right. So let's jump into the comic book news. DC has made Aquaman. Oh, Aquaman official. Starting in February 2022, Aquaman will be written by Chuck Brown and Brandon Thomas with art by Sammy Bassery. The series will team up Arthur Curry with Jackson Hydeus. It's supposed they, to be Hydes. I miss Hydes. Out. Okay. They, I don't know because I'm not reading Aquaman, so I'm confused as hell right now. Uh, they investigate a conspiracy against Atlantis and the surface world. It's all fake news. Um, oh, it's Jackson Hyde as... They investigate. So, yeah, it's oh, just two words got to come Hyde together. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Hideas. Uh, Hideas. So, you're an Aquaman fan. You're reading all the stuff. What do you think? I'm in. I mean, it's Aquaman. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm just, I'm enjoying Aquaman becoming. I like Jackson Hyde as a character. Um, mm-hmm. I'm enjoying that Black Mana series. And then we'll talk about um, Deep Threat in, at the end of the show. But I'm enjoying all the Aquaman stuff. And I want to see curry come back like yeah you know we don't have a curry thing so for him to team up with jackson and do something would be cool i'm down for it okay cool uh marvel has announced a new what if comic series oh wow very uh <laughs> very surprising wow didn't see that one coming uh yeah this comic will be what if miles morales each issue will feature a different creative team and put miles in the role of a different marvel hero uh, we know two of the issues will be Miles as Captain America and Miles as Wolverine. So, pretty cool. I don't know why they're sticking with just Miles Morales. Maybe he's going to make an appearance in a movie. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, at, you know, we've we've talked to uh, to the big editor in chief over there in Marvel, and he said he'd be stupid not to do these things, right? Yeah, and you know they got the ongoing Miles book. They always have. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, that. I was confused why Miles as well, other than mm-hmm. the fact that he's just a great character and he's very popular. But fine. I <laughs> the part I found really funny about this though is the Miles is Cap thing. So yeah. there was always a joke when Bucky took over his cap that his suit looked like the Puerto Rican flag. So okay. he was jokingly known as Captain Puerto Rico. Um and when you look at the Miles as Cap, it's just the Bucky suit. And Miles is um, half Puerto Rican in the comics, okay. so I just i 
I like that. I don't know if this is a nod to like the joke from the early internet days. Mm-hmm. Probably, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. it just made me smile when I saw it. And I was like, that's the Bucky suit. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it, and it ties into the character being Puerto Rican. Yeah. So that's funny. But uh, yeah, I'm down for this. More what if? Why not? Yeah. Um, or what if more miles? Right in my wheelhouse. Yep. They should just call him Marvel. Why not? <laughs> Why would you not pick this up? <laughs> DC, you, I'm here. Call me, man. DC's why not? <laughs> why not? Why? Uh, why? I don't know. They'll figure out the grammar. Speaking um, of which, DC, why? Like, can we get more tales from the multiverse, or not multiverse? Tales from the dark multiverse? Like, yeah, what, that doesn't need to stop. Why not? Yeah, you know? just because Scott's gone doesn't mean you need to stop doing it. Yeah, come on. Um. Recently, it was announced that IDW will no longer publish Marvel and Star Wars all ages comics after 2021. Uh, we now know that Dark Horse is stepping in for the Star Wars line, like they used to do, right? For a while. They used to do all the Star Wars stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Starting in 2022, Dark Horse will be publishing new all ages comics set in the Star Wars universe. Interesting that the property kind of bounces around. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing this. Um, mm. It. It's been a weird couple months, like to get really insider on it. Yeah, we've been following. IDW has signed on with a uh, Penguin House yep. and Marvel to distribute their books outside of Diamond. So everybody was like, "Well, maybe IDW is trying to get something together to keep doing these all ages book." And then this happens. Yeah, and I don't exactly know why. Maybe there's just a better. Dark Horse is like, we can do it for cheaper. I don't know, maybe. Um, but it's cool to see Dark Horse doing Star Wars again. Because for yeah. my entire life up until like, what, five, six years ago, whenever that happened, yep. it's been Dark yep. Horse on the cover of my book. So Right. So, Which is interesting because isn't Dark Horse part of DC? I don't believe, no. They're no? independent. I thought they, oh, okay. I thought they owned them for a while. Maybe I was wrong. Um, either way, it's just like, why? why wouldn't Marvel do these? You know, I, I don't know either. It, it, Marvel's weird with like the the all ages and y, YA stuff because mm-hmm. DC does DC doesn't do much for all ages, but they do a ton of actually they do do all ages stuff. Yeah, they also do a ton of YA stuff. Like they're all over the place doing whatever. Mm-hmm. Where Marvel seems to like want to stick down their lane, and then yep. like if you want to do that extra stuff, like we'll just let them do it. Mm-hmm. And who knows why? But there's got to be a reason. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to maybe look into it someday. All the legality behind it. It'd be interesting. I'll have to, yeah, we'll have to look it up one these days. Um all right. Things I'm looking up now are the comics I read this week. Uh Suicide Squad number nine. Um if you're not reading Suicide Squad, you're stupid. Uh That's me, what- everybody. <laughs> yeah, so this is um I don't know when the story arc is going to end, but Robbie Thompson writing it, uh, Eduardo Pensica on the art, really good stuff. Um, basically there's, you know, two suicide squad. Now, uh, um, Colonel flag put his own suicide squad together. And then Amanda Waller still has her suicide squad. Um, basically they, I think they're, they're in space right now. Um, I don't know how they, you know, they're, they're basically, I think they get into a fight with each other. Um, and when they're in space, they run into a green lantern, but also they run into the Thanagarians. So that's kind of how it ends with like, you know, the Hawkeye people, uh, fighting, shooting at them while they're in their ship and blow their ship up while they're in space. So that's kind of where it leaves off. This is a great series. You get a lot of cool characters, um, that you normally wouldn't see in mainstream books. Uh, Superman, son of Kal-El. Number five. Wow, it's been five issues already. Um, this was the controversial issue because Superman uh, kisses another guy. This is where he comes out as bisexual, so not a big How deal there. Damn. Um, I know, right? Uh, all that matters is the story's still good. Yes, the story's still good. Tom Taylor's still killing it. Um, basically, you know, Superboy is trying to do all everything at once, and then realizes, oh man. Uh, I actually get exhausted. <laughs> um, even though you know Superman might be your name, but you still have to rest after a while. So that's kind of like 
he's trying to figure out a, a way to balance helping everybody in the world by also he needs to rest at some point. Uh, nice House on the Lake, um, issue six. This is a James Tinian horror book. Basically, we get an overview of like the the first friend of this alien that trapped everybody in this cabin. Um, if you don't know the premise, he's like ending the world and befriended these people. And now he puts them in a cabin to be observed by the alien race to be like, this is a reason you should save humanity because this, these are the, the people that I were friends with. So um, they kind of figure out the whole backstory. And then I think everything gets reset, like their minds get wiped and they're back in the cabin, just like acting like they're camping. So I don't know where it's going to go from there um, or if it's just going to end. Yeah, what's uh, depressing is now they're going to take a hiatus. Yeah, right, exactly. So they, like, wipe the slate clean. They're like, okay, now we're just camping. Uh, Shang-Chi ended the story arc, the Shang-Chi number six, where he versus the Marvel Universe. He fights Thor in this issue, um, and he has a lightning sword when he does it. It's pretty badass, but you find out the lightning sword is actually the cosmic cube. That's why it's so powerful and holding and pretty much melts Mjolnir with it. Yeah. Um, it was a great fight scene, but then we find out that Shang-Chi never knew he had the Cosmic Cube in his possession. He thought his brother had given it over to someone. Um, his brother didn't think that the Avengers should have it, so then Shang-Chi gives up his brother and the Cosmic Cube. But they still don't kind of trust him. Uh, the next, I love this book. Um, and now the next series is going to go into where his mother came from, because his mother has been trapped in the Phantom Zone for or. Is that what they call it in Marvel? Uh, negative zone. Negative zone, sorry. Um, she's been trapped there and made friends with these weird, like, uh, I, I might have talked about this, but these weird, like, alien cockroaches that live there. <laughs> um, and so it's really creepy because after everything she says, she makes a little, like, clicking noise like a cockroach um, because that's all she had to talk to while she was there. It's really it's really creepy. Um, so I'm curious to see where they're going to go with that. She's definitely not right in the head. Uh She's definitely pretty messed up, and I don't think it's good. I think it's. I think she's pretty evil too. We're gonna find out. Uh, Dark Ages number three. Speaking of Tom Taylor, um, did you read this one? I did. So the, I mean, this one focuses on Johnny Storm a little bit. You can almost, <laughs> you can almost tell when they're gonna kill a character off when they start off like focusing on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um but the team the team kind of finds out that what that all the all the biggest minds in the Marvel universe are working for Apocalypse. Or, uh, not Apo is that his name? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um so you have Tony Stark, you have uh uh Mr. Fantastic. Yeah, so in the last issue Tony got uh kidnapped. Captured. Yep. So they're trying to find him and they send Quicksilver over to yeah, figure out what's going on. That's when they realize like Reed Richards is alive, and yep. all these other people are working for him. And they send Quicksilver back possessed, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and then he ends up stabbing Johnny Storm through the heart, and then he dies. Um, and what Sue finds out is that her husband is still alive and her son. Yeah, so she's pissed and she's ready to fight some people. Um, and then in the end, we find out that Venom and Carnage have like morphed together. Is yes. that a thing? I was, I was trying to figure that out because at first I'm like, "That's Miles," because um, the red and black. Yeah. And then he said them, so I wasn't sure if it was like Carnage and Venom. I don't know what it is, but it's yeah. some symbiote together. Mm -hmm. I think you have to have a host. So my feeling is that it's Venom and Miles. Oh, okay. Okay. But they don't really. They don't really tell you. They just kind of leave it on a cliffhanger. Okay. Um, Army of Darkness, 1979, number three. This book's fun. Ash is fighting uh, gangs in New York and demons at the same time. Um, not much more than that. but uh, DC Vampires, number two. Another big kill happens in this issue. Um, Green, Green Lantern is going around murking people. Uh, he has this whole conversation with Barry Allen, and then he kills him. <laughs> uh, snaps his neck. But he he pretty much tells him, if you were a vampire dude, you wouldn't leave any food for us because of his metabolism. I love the comic book science there. Yeah. I thought that was pretty awesome. It, that that scene was just 
gut wrenching. Like yeah, him being yeah. like, "I tried fighting for you. I tried." Yeah, and he's like, "I tried." Oh. Yeah, and then and then Batman and the Bat Family are all trying to piece together, you know, the big plan while some DC heroes have figured it out already. So you you see like a resistance starting to form. This book's awesome. And I love uh, they set up the all the vampires to be kind of traditional vampires because right. uh, when Bruce gets all the Bat family together, he like does all the typical vampires other than yeah. stabbing them with a spike. Right. right. Um, but like all their coffees made with holy water. Yeah. Um, they have to hold a cross. They're sitting in yep. sunlight, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then there's that great moment where Alfred comes out and goes, so was it an oversight that you didn't make me drink any of the holy water? Yeah, and he's like, no, I had somebody bless the boiler, so you would have burned alive in your tub. You yeah, in your tub when you took your bath. <laughs> that was uh, like that fucking was Batman. Cool. Yeah, of course he thought of it. Uh, Batman Reptilian. This is the final <laughs> issue. Um, it was okay. It kind of fell off at the end for me. Um, yeah, I so I haven't read this issue yet, but yeah, the last issue was kind of tough to get through. I'm not. Yeah, gonna this was this was kind of tough, and then. So I haven't gotten to Night of the Ghoul. There's a couple other issues, like the Deathstroke issue. I got to read uh, Radiant Black, number eleven. Um, yeah. So this is the uh, this is the issue where we uh, we get Nate back, hopefully. Um, the main character. So he's like, you know, his friend is is in this other dimension uh, where he goes through all these crazy colors, and the art is fantastic. Um but he's basically like trying to find the truth and there's something else they say, the truth and the, I don't know, something else, but you know, basically he finds Nathan at the end and they're like heading towards the light saying that he's hopefully going to come out of the coma. Um, clear issue two. This is the Scott Snyder, Francis Manipal book. Um, are you reading this one? So I actually read clear one and two this week. Oh, okay. Did you like it? I really, really liked it. Um, yeah. The first issue sets up like this noir, almost like Blade Runner-esque future. Yep, exactly. I, I dug it. So, mm-hmm. um, Yeah, and the second one, he's kind of investigating where his ex-wife went, and he stumbles upon this huge compound of all these like r- rebellion people. Uh, so I don't know how he's going to get himself out of there. Uh, Blue F- Flame number five. This book is really good. Um, at the end, we find out that you know he's talking to an old friend and he's talking to this alien that's gonna that's putting him on trial, and uh, they're both kind of like betraying him, like you know, recording him when he doesn't know, like giving the truth about humanity and stuff that we you know we well, how he really feels instead of being on trial. Um, and those are the books I had this week. Still, still a few I haven't gotten to yet, but um, I read quite a bit. So, yeah, same here. Um, I will say, just uh, Comicsology had a Black Friday sale. Oh damn, I missed that. And I picked up a few things. Uh, I haven't read them yet, but I picked up uh, Once in Future Volume One, Two, and Three. Oh, those are good. Yep. And then that Texas Blood Volume One. And because you loved it so much, uh, Birthright Volume 1. Oh, you're starting it, huh? So I'm going to give that nice. a shot. But, they, dude, like all that all that, and um, I bought the Hawkeye run that Fraction mm-hmm. did that yeah. the show is based on. And I think it cost me less than 20 bucks. That's awesome. I think a lot of them are still on sale right now. Um, oh, okay. As of this recording, everybody. But tomorrow is Cyber Monday, so maybe there's new ones. I don't know. Um, for what I read, other than what we already talked about, I also read Wonder Woman Evolution number one. Okay. This was the Stephanie Phillips Wonder Woman book. Oh, yeah. Not the best start. <laughs> okay. Um, it's kind of like she starts by having this whole monologue about like what evolution is and why it's important and blah blah blah. And then she fights one of these villains who's evolved into something better and she beats her obviously. And then there's like the, the best part of the book was this conversation she has with uh, Superman on top of Mount Everest. Okay. And they're just talking about the fact that like they're basically gods. <laughs> and that's when she's like, she realizes she has to do something else and kind of flies away. And that's where it ends. 
So it's Stephanie, so I'll give it one more issue, but I wasn't thrilled with that first issue, to be honest. Okay. Um, Task Force Z number two. <laughs> um, so I still have to read that. Task Force Z is sent off, and they so it picks up where the last issue left off, and obviously they get through it, and they go back, and then we learn that the the Lazarus pills can actually like regenerate body parts and everything. Oh, that okay. As long as somebody still has their head and brain, they can regenerate their whole body. Okay. Um. And then they go on this mission where they have to find a new member for the team and they run into the Cobra cult who's reforming for like the first time forever. Okay. Um, whole battle. And then they have to find this new uh, person and where they find them is in a coffin. Cause obviously it's task force Z right. and they revive them and it ends up being dead shot. Oh, that's awesome. And it ends with Deadshot shooting Red uh, Hood in the chest. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, like that issue better than the first issue. So yeah. I really like the series. Primordial number three. Um, this book's a real slow burn, but I get the feeling it's going to punch you in the gut sooner or later. Uh, we've got kind of the lead character and this woman from the issue, uh, second issue. And they have met up and they're kind of talking about the whole conspiracy behind everything. And they end up going away because the KGB finds them and they have to go somewhere to find this old Nazi um, science base to open it up and try to see if they can tap into whatever's going on up in space with the chimp and the dog. And then the other side, we have the chimp and the dog and they're doing their thing and they seem to be morphing reality in ways because they're able to like bring up the earth and then flatten it and do all this weird shit with it. So obviously they've gained some sort of power beyond dimensions. Okay. And that's why I think this is going to really punch punch us in the gut. Cause <laughs> at some point that has to come to a turn. Um, really good. Uh, Andrew Sortino's art is just out of this world. Like he's doing some of the best work of his life between this and Batman and the imposter. Aquaman green arrow, deep threat number two. <laughs> so the two are, on Oliver's, if you remember the first issue, they've swapped bodies. Okay. So the two are on Oliver's jet and they're flying. Somebody attacks them. And there's a whole fight sequence where they have to help each other with their powers. Well, Arthur has to help Oliver with Arthur's powers. And then we find out that basically they both have each other's memories, but their old memories are kind of fading. So that's how they get away with Arthur being able to use the bow with such skill. Um, and then they land on this uh, island in the middle of nowhere, which I get the feeling is going to be Green Arrow's island where he you know, discovers himself. And that's kind of where it ends. But it does introduce a big villain. I'm not familiar with the character, so I don't know if it's somebody new or not. But we'll mm -hmm. see. Okay. And then Robin and Batman number one. Um, it was okay. I wasn't yeah. on it. I'm not a huge Robin fan, so I didn't read it. Yeah. So that's everything I read, Mike. Where can people find you on the internet? You can find me at Fortress Ricker on Twitter. Where can they find you and or the show? Well, you can find me at Fortress Chris on Twitter, and they can find the show at Fortress Comics underscore on Twitter. Also at FortressComicNews.com. Remember, everybody, if you are listening to give us the five star review on the pod, catch your choice. If you're watching, like, subscribe, share, and comment down below. And if you want to go the extra mile, patreon.com slash Fortress Comics. Thank you all so much for listening this week. We'll see you all here next week.